A few years ago I made this touch sensor and I connected it to this LED light so that I wouldn't have to use this lame switch to turn it on and off. Although I used it for a while because it worked pretty well, there were two things that I didn't like about it. The first one was that it used four integrated circuits, three triple five timers and a flip flop, which is enough in my opinion to justify using a microcontroller. And the second flaw which was a little bit frustrating was that if I'd turn an appliance on and off, sometimes this would trigger the touch sensor and turn the light on. For this reason I stopped using it and never thought about making a YouTube video about it. So this video is going to be about making an improved version that addresses those two problems. My initial idea on how to build this thing was the following. I'd use a triple five timer in a stable mode to create a square wave, but I'd leave out the capacitor and just use stray capacitance which would change a lot whether you're touching the pin or you're not, and this would vary the frequency. After that I'd use an RC low pass filter to distinguish whether the frequency is high or low basically, and then with a diode detector I would basically find what the peak is. Then with a comparator I would just turn this into two digital outputs and feed this to a flip-flop which would switch states based on every rising edge of the output of the comparator. But for me this was still too many ICs. I'd rather have a maximum of two. So I started thinking that usually op amps are dual or quad op amps so one IC actually has two of them in there. And I remember that we can create square waves with an op amp by using this simple circuit. Basically the way this works is it has positive feedback that's just proportional and it has negative feedback which is delayed and the frequency that it produces is based on the RC constant and if we use our stray capacitance as the capacitor then we can change the frequency by touching or not touching the pin. Now at this point I think it's no secret that I like ordering my PCBs from PCBWay.com. They offer great quality PCBs at low prices and they ship really quickly. Not only that, but it's their 10th anniversary. Now let me show you some of the great things they're giving away. They got a bunch of coupons, different values, so you can use them for whatever size project you want. And they're even giving away free prizes. They got some great things, for example, Raspberry Pis, soldering stations, little oscilloscopes, Bluetooth amplifiers, and a bunch of different things that I really think you'll like. So I encourage you to go over to PCBWay.com, links in the description, and check out all their great stuff. So now we can go on and build this thing. First thing we do is build our oscillator as I just explained. And if we probe the output we can see that when I'm not touching the contact there's actually no oscillation. And this is good because it means that we can just eliminate our low pass filter and directly add our diode detector. The reason for there not being any oscillation is probably because of the low slew rate of this op amp. So if you're going to use a different one you should test this and see whether it actually works this way. Now we add our diode with a series resistor and a capacitor on the output with a big resistor to discharge it so that it doesn't just stay charged all the time. And we can see that that's working properly when we touch it. Next thing is to add the comparator circuit. And here all we do is use the second op amp inside of the IC and we use a potentiometer to adjust the threshold level. And you can see that when I touch this kind of slightly and I very slowly decrease the frequency, we can actually see that it's not a stable output but it oscillates. To fix this problem we should add some hysteresis. What this does is it makes the output stable even when there's a little bit of oscillation or noise on the input. The last part is to add our flip-flop. I use the CD4013 this is an integrated circuit with two flip-flops inside and I just use one of them. So we connect the output of our comparator to the clock input of the flip-flop. To make it change state every rising edge of the clock, all we have to do is connect Q inverted to the D input which is simply the state that we want our flip-flop to be after the next rising edge of the clock. The Q output is just the state of our light, so in this case I connected it to the gate of a MOSFET and this is just going to switch on a small light bulb so we can have a feedback of what's happening. Before finishing the video I want to give a few important tips if you're going to build this. The first one is that if the wire connecting the pad that you want to touch to the actual circuit is too long this is going to add extra capacitance and this might create oscillation even when you're not touching the input. So in that case you need the low pass filter. Also I noticed that it's important to ground the ground of the circuit so the negative terminal to real ground. Here you can see that I'm doing it with the ground connection of the oscilloscope 
which is connected to real earth ground and it works fine but when I disconnect it it stops working in fact when I touch ground then that actually makes it switch alright so thanks so much for watching the video I really hope this was informative and also entertaining if you have any thoughts or questions or suggestions you can just leave them in the comments I always try to read all the comments so thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video